Rahman Rahim and Salaf Zahra. Do you know that there is a cancer in the head and neck region that is causing a lot of problems in terms of treatment and management, which is squamous cell carcinoma of the tongue, or we call it tongue cancer. Tongue cancer is one of the head and neck cancers worldwide, and although in terms of the number of cases, it is not common, however, the location and the function affected by the cancer is causing a lot of difficulties with significant mobility and mortality. So we look at what are the problems. As clinician who treats tongue cancer, I would love patients to come as early as possible because there is a significant relationship between early stage and early diagnosis with the outcome of the cancer management. So what are the most important points or symptoms that patient can be aware of that they need to go to see a healthcare professional to seek further advice and further management. Number one is non-healing tongue ulcer. Any non-healing tongue ulcer more than two weeks needs specialist review and most likely biopsy will be done. Number two, painful swallowing. Number three, patient might have loss of appetite and because of that, patient might have loss of weight. And number four is neck swelling. And number five could be any other symptoms related to constitutional symptoms. So if patients are aware and the healthcare professionals are aware of these symptoms and the presence of ulcer over the tongue, they must seek professional opinion as soon as possible. Because as I mentioned before, early diagnosis will lead to a better management. Okay, so what are the challenges that we still face at this moment? Number one is there is still lack of awareness in terms of the symptoms that could represent tongue cancer. That's number one. So patients keep on seeking treatment for non-healing tongue ulcer and changing medicines and changing doctors from time to time until the presentation is too late and the tumor has gone bigger and causing advanced stage and causing difficulty in treatment and management. Number two is, it's not just the awareness to the public but awareness to the medical practitioners or dental practitioners who are basically the first line healthcare expert where the public go and seek opinion. So doctors who are working in the primary care sectors or dentists in the primary care sectors, these are the group of people that will see first the patient that comes to them with a non-healing ulcer. So number one is awareness. We need to do something to increase awareness. We need to do something that can increase understanding of the condition of a tongue cancer. Okay, that is the most important aspect for me because as I mentioned, any cancer, if presented early, the outcome will be significantly better than a late presentation. Number two is knowledge. So how we can increase knowledge, especially to the medical practitioners that we must raise the suspicion whenever they are seeing a non-healing tongue ulcer that has lasted more than two weeks and immediately send for referral to the specialist to do further management. And number three is the type of treatment. The most, the most difficult part of the treatment for tongue cancer is most of the time or the first line treatment that we can offer to patients are surgical excision or surgical removal of a small part or half of the tongue or probably the whole tongue needs to be removed depending on the stage. So these pose difficulties to patient to accept the decision. That's why patient needs to come early. However, if we are able to provide or give an alternative that prevent removal of surgical resection of the tongue 
perhaps maybe patients will agree to come early for treatment. One thing that concerns me is what are the causes of tongue cancer. This needs to be researched further because what we traditionally know, tongue cancer or oral cavity cancer, the majority or the main causes of these cancers are smoking and bitter nut chewing. The two traditional risk factors and also alcohol consumption. However, if you look at the background of patients that come to our center, mostly they are non-smokers, non-alcoholic, and also non-bitter nut chewer. So they are not having any of this traditional risk factor for an oral cavity cancer. So that's why we need to do more research, look at at a molecular level, look at what are the risks that these patients have that cause them to have oral cavity cancer. So I think if we are trying to look into what are the type of research that can improve further in terms of the outcome of the treatment for tongue cancer, the most important aspect is early presentation. The most difficult part of tongue cancer treatment is you have to resect the tongue, whether it is in small parts or, or, or partial or complete resection of the tongue, which is because of the locations of the tongue, because of the function of the tongue, and because of the cosmetic appearance of the effects of surgical resection. This has been hampering patients from accepting the treatment offered. So that's why patient is a little bit worried to accept the treatment. So if we can offer or we are right now offering an option that patient will agree because of our treatment options with hybrid, hybrid vacuum therapy followed by intensity modulated radiotherapy offers patient organ preservation and also function preservation. However, these techniques also come with some complication which we can enhance further if we can do a proper research or the correct research to increase the outcome of the result of our treatment. So what are the things that can still be done for me is basically understanding the volume of the cancer. We can take for example, if we do an imaging investigation to look at the size of the tumor, a computerized 3D reconstruction of the actual volume of the cancer and using some sort of artificial intelligence technology to predict the number of the radiation required and also the number of brachytherapy applicators required to match perfectly the amount of the applicators required for a patient or for a size of tumor and the amount of the optimum dosage of radiation that can be given to patients for adequate treatment to target to cure the cancer and at the same time also to reduce side effects as much as possible leading to complete response of the cancer treatment. So if we are able to provide this to our patients, I believe more patients will come early for treatment because they know that if they come early, the result will be much, much better. And they do not have to worry about losing their functions of speech and swallowing, which is the two very, very important aspects of our daily life. So in conclusion, I summarize what are the problems that still need to be addressed and what are the things that we can do in terms of research to help increase the outcome of the treatment for tongue cancer. Number one, we need to have something that can spread the awareness. We need to do something that can increase the awareness because early presentation better outcome. 
And number two, we can still enhance the quality of our treatment method that is able to, to do function preservation and organ preservation. And number three, of course, we have to look at what are the actual causes. Apart from the traditional risk factors that I mentioned just now, the three factor, smoking, alcohol consumption, alcohol drinking, and also bitter nut chew. So it is important for us to do further research to look at what are the actual factors that are causing tongue cancer in our patients. I think that's all. Hopefully we can collaborate further and find and do research that can give better solutions and increase the quality of treatment to our patients and also increase the quality of life to those patients treated in our centre. Thank you very much.